So in a recent video I showed you how to build this 2.4 GHz omnidirectional bike antenna and uh, what I thought I'd do now in this video is show you how to build one for 5.8 GHz for uh, FPV. So this is the 5.8 GHz bi-quad antenna that I've uh, designed and I'll show you how to build in this video and what I did differently is instead of building one with four lobes I thought we'd build one with six so we're not just copying this one and of course uh, shortening that wavelength so this one's a little bit different so if you can build this you can build this one and vice versa and uh, of course it's exactly the same it's just much smaller wavelength so let's crack on get on the bench get the tools out and I'll show you how you can build one of these for yourself so the method for making this antenna for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz is just about the same as the 2.4 it's just obviously things are a lot smaller and uh, we're going to be working off a quarter wavelength for this antenna and a quarter wavelength at 5.8 gigahertz that I'm working on today is 13 millimeters long so I've made a little metal measuring tool just like I did in the uh, previous video so we don't have to keep getting the ruler out and measuring off all the wavelengths on uh, a piece of wire with a uh, felt tip pen or sharpie and then it gives you the potential of uh, actually getting those measurements wrong and of course it's a lot quicker using this as well so to make this antenna I've got some copper wire here and it is uh, 21 SWG thickness and uh, really you don't want to go any thicker than that with this antenna because of the such short wavelength and uh, when it is all soldered together it's pretty strong it's a pretty robust antenna when it's made from uh, this copper wire so to start with I'm just going to put a little right angle bend in there I'm not measuring it just quite small so I can actually start and put my measuring tool up to that so I can then start measuring all the wavelengths off so I've got my measuring tool I'm going to hold it there coming with my needle nose pliers put them up against that measuring tool and then I'm going to put my first bend in there like so and then it's just a matter of going around creating that bow tie effect so as you can see it's quite quick to actually construct one of these when you've got a little measuring tool like this really does make it easy and this final wavelength here I'll just trim that off with some wire cutters again using my measuring tool butted up against the wire cutters and it can snip and then we can trim this off as well now the easiest way to construct this antenna is to do one full bicord element just like I've just done and then uh, create four half bicord elements if you like and bring those in to solder onto this main body it just makes it a lot easier and uh, it actually comes together really well so to make half of one it's simple it's just the same method as making a full one but once you get to this point you stop and cut it off So once you get to this point here, just use your measuring tool along that side there and instead of using your uh, needle nose pliers to put a bend in, just use your wire cutters to snip it off. So I'm going to be using blue tack to help me to solder this antenna together and uh, we're going to be soldering the top legs of this antenna together first and uh, the bottom legs are going to be soldered on later directly onto the actual coax of the antenna. So what you want to actually aim for is a gap between the top legs and the bottom legs of around three millimeters two to three millimeters you don't really want to be going any higher than that so what you want to do is just pull your legs apart making sure that they're greater than about three millimeters just uh, eyeballing it at this stage so we can actually go in there later and get them spot on but for now to solder the top legs all together just pull it apart so it's uh, just a little bit greater than three millimeters four or five millimeters gap so we'll start off by positioning our main element first the one that's the actual bi-quad element and then we can go around and butt all the smaller elements up to that so 
So once you're happy you've got all your elements positioned correctly, you want to get your soldering iron and get yourself a big blob of solder on that soldering iron. And just solder all those legs together at once. Now I'm trying to do this on camera but you, what you want to do is actually move it around and uh, make sure you've got all those legs soldered up. So once you're happy that you've got the top part of the legs soldered up you can just pull the uh, blue tack off your board and go in from the underside and just make sure that you've got plenty of solder around all those legs. So once you're happy, let it cool down a little bit because it makes uh, removing the blue tack a lot easier. This stuff can melt into a sticky mess but uh, if you let it cool down it comes away quite easily. So next stage I've got a piece of this uh, semi-rigid coax, some RG402. I've already put an SMA connector on the bottom. It's uh, about 80mm in length and I've just trimmed back some of the outer braid here to expose 3mm of the inner core. And I'm going to put some tin around the outer braid here right at the top so we can solder on the bottom legs of our element in place and then finally solder the centre pin to the top legs. So I've got the element on the coax now but I haven't soldered it in place it's just the tension of the legs that's holding it in place to the coax and I want to move each leg up slightly right so it's right on the edge of the outer braid of the coax there. So uh, I actually get my three millimeters that gap that I'm looking for between the bottom legs and the top legs. So I'm just going to manipulate that into place. Just so the legs are right at the top there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and solder each leg individually. So I'm going to solder this leg first here because I've got that just about where I want it. So I'm just tacking them in place for now. And now I'm just going round making sure that each one is actually soldered on and there's not a dry one there. So now all the bottom legs are soldered in place what I'm going to do now is push down on the bench with a little bit of pressure so the inner core actually touches those top legs and then get in there with a soldering iron and a little bit of solder and then solder that in place and then what I can do is go round with some epoxy putty and really strengthen build it up around those joints to really strengthen and protect them. You could probably use hot glue as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful and uh, of course if you ever go to building one of these yourself and uh, test it out on your FPV gear then uh, please let us know what the uh, video quality was like at a longer range. Is it uh, any better than uh, antennas you viewed previously or is it about the same? But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it anyway and you'll join me on the next one.